So this, of course, assumes you were here yesterday, right? Uh, or that you at least watched the video yesterday and that you know how to do elimination in general. So today's the second. It's a neat date. It's another one of those neat dates. Tomorrow will be a neat date too. Two, three, two, three. But today's not quite as cool. It's two, 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 three. That's actually pretty cool too. Yeah. So this is more elimination. But the key today is that we have to move some stuff around. So I say, I think honestly, if I just do maybe one of these with you, you'll be fine. Uh, if you want to do more, of course, I'm happy to do that with you. So in the first problem, I'll copy it down here on the board. So you right away see that some things are amiss, right? Some things are bad. So I'm going to pause my recording and update my attendance kind of periodically as I go. But you see that that things are out of place. So we're going to fix that. Let me get my attendance caught up here real quick first. So I'm not going to tell you that you have to do it this way. Here's what I will tell you you have to do. You have to get all of your like terms lined up. I would tell you as a matter of, if, I hope by this point, February 2nd, that you trust me. Like, you know, I didn't just fall off a turnip truck like mm -hmm. in August or something. Um, really, your best bet is going to be to just try to make them all look like they did yesterday. Um, that standard form, you could make them all into a more creative form, but really, I don't see the point. Like, there's a lot of reasons to just do it like we did yesterday. So my goal as I look at these problems is to say, how can I make each problem look like yesterday's? Meaning x plus or minus then y then equals sign then number that's just should be your goal and it's just a nice routine way to always go through this process so when i look at the first equation um there's a couple things that i have issue with i don't really have a bone to pick with the equation itself i just don't like the structure of it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of flip flop it first of all and remember this is one of these flip flops where you can switch the left and right side of an equation. If you literally just switch the whole thing, you can switch it without changing sides. Cause you're not really moving anybody. It's just like saying if Fred is the same age as Nancy, you could literally reverse it and say, Nancy is the same age as Fred, right? Like you're not changing anything. You're just saying it kind of backwards. So for this first equation, I'm gonna do what's what we call just more of a cosmetic change. I'm gonna rewrite it so that it looks the way I want. I'm gonna move the two X and the plus y so that it becomes my left side. And then I'm gonna move the equals negative 36 to the right side. And again, I know I'm always preaching to you that you have to switch signs, but we didn't really move anything across an equal sign. We just literally wrote an equation backwards, okay? So we didn't really do any math there. So I like the way the first equation looks now. It kind of is back in my wheelhouse from yesterday. As far as the second equation goes, what do you think we should move? I agree. And this will be an algebra move. This is a math move. I don't want to just reflect, um, zoop, like switch the equation backwards, because then I'll still have parts and pieces where they don't belong. So I'm going to do what Zane said. And the first thing I'm thinking is I want to get this 2x, the negative 2x, you know, I want to get him over there to the left. So that's going to be a math move. But if I do that, then I also have to be thinking about this minus 36. I guess I need to move you over to that side. And this far enough, this far along in the year, we shouldn't really need to be showing a cute little plus 2x. On, I mean, you can if you want to, but really, I'm just going to move the 2x over to the left-hand side and make it a positive 2x. What am I going to do with the negative 8y? Absolutely nothing, right? The negative 8y is already on the correct side, so I'm not going to change him. I'm just going to kind of stick him right there next to his new buddy, Mr. Hey, look at me, I showed up on your side, 2x. And then I'm gonna copy down the equals and I'm gonna have positive 36 now over on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. Of course.
Yeah, like, are you going for the next step now? Mm -hmm. You could, um, yeah, if you wanted to, like, we're gonna, we're gonna probably have to do that now anyways. But my take is I don't want to really do any math in that first step. My, my first goal, let me try to be clear about this, is just to get all the X, E, Y stuff on the left and get the number stuff on the right. We okay with that? I'm not worried about solving the system or looking for shortcuts at this point. I just want it to look, because I look at this now, and again, assuming that you were here and that you did the work, you'd look at that now, and there's no way you could disagree with this statement. That looks just like yesterday's problems now, right? And that's what I'm going for. And at this point now, I think about how do I solve the system? So yes, you would agree that this is a level two problem. It's not a level one because nothing is ready to cancel. You're not allowed to look at a pair of two X's and say they can cancel. Remember, two X and two X make four X. So at this point, I'm going to take either equation. Let's do like the bottom one. That's fine. By negative one. So now we're starting back into yesterday's work. We're just kind of redoing this again. The Really, the only new part of today was the prep getting it all to look the right way. So if I multiply the bottom equation by um, negative one, what would it be? perfection. And then as I said yesterday, I think you'd be wise to always just form good habits and rebuild the problem. Don't look for shortcuts. Don't try to save paper. Just say, okay, I rewrote the bottom equation. So now I'm going to take, follow the red arrow here. I'm going to take this top equation and I'm going to copy it now right up above the one that it's going to eliminate with. So I'm going to copy down the 2x and the plus y and the equals and the negative 36. And again, yesterday we learned this is now what we would call a level one, right? It's ready to go. So at this point, when I add downwards, the X's, I hope it's obvious, will eliminate. How many Y's will we get? Yeah. Nine Y's equals what's negative 36 plus negative 36? Negative, negative 72. Divide both sides by nine and you get Y equals negative eight. So at this point, my final answer is written over here in yellow. And I can pop that negative eight in place of where the Y would go. Of course, the second spot. <clears throat> and I have, I, I, you could make a case that there are four, five equations on the board. I don't even know. You, you literally pick any place that floats your boat, man. As, uh, so which equation... So say I just numbered them, and I'll call this number one, this is number two, this is number three, this is number four, and then we'll call this one number five. I don't need to label that other one because it's a copy of number three. So which one do we like? Three is fine with me. Skylar could pick four. Uh, Alina could pick one. Sebastian could pick two. I just, as I said, I don't care as long as we haven't made mistakes and we don't make any, we're all going to get back to the same point. Uh, so Tegan said number three. So if I take equation number three and I rewrite it, but I change his Y into a negative eight, I'll write this in blue, just kind of tuck it right in here. It'll say two X. What's plus Y going to change into? Yeah, minus eight equals negative 36. And if the number 44 is in your mind, then you've got a lot of work left to do. I'm still not getting through. How do we get that minus eight to the other side? We have to add eight. And what's negative 36 plus eight? <clears throat> negative 28. Yeah, you go the wrong way if you're even thinking about 44. <clears throat> Divide by two, what's X? Negative 14, pop it in there, move on your way. So you would agree, it's just yesterday okay. over again, but with prep work involved. Would you like to do another one? Do number two? Or you can pick, is there anything on the page that catches your eye where you go, I'd like to talk about that. There's only eight problems, so. I'll keep the recording if you, I'll give you another second here. Any questions? I'd be happy to do another. Okay, I'll just pause the recording instead of stopping it. If anyone says, hey, can we go over number whatever, I'll just resume the recording at that point. So anyone that's not here could follow along.
number three was asked about. We shall do number three. So the problem in its original form So, sorry, I was eating a carrot. Your goal is to put your X and your Y in that order on the left, and then followed by your equal sign. And then your number, we call that a constant on the right side. Good? So we have to focus one equation at a time. If you look at this top equation, I'll call him equation number one. Tell me one guy that has to move. Yeah, the X is in the wrong place. So I'll use a little colored diagram here. You would agree that this 13X has to go to the left side. Who else should move? Move the 10. So I'm going to take a positive 10, and I'm going to move him crossways back over to the right. And if I do this correctly, when I get to the left side, I should have a positive now 13x because he had to move. What's going to come after him? Minus 9y equals what? Good job. Equation one is ready to rock and roll. When I think about equation number two, just tell me some stuff. What do you notice about that equation? Yeah, basically that 30 is like, like, what are you going to do? I'm in the wrong place. Move it to the other side. Very good. And I also would tell you this. I don't particularly care for the order in which these two terms have decided to place themselves. A couple of little dang rebel rousers, those guys. But I got a fix for this. All I'm going to simply do is take this negative X and put it right there. Not doing any fancy math here. I'm just, I'm not even moving it across an equals. I'm just switching their places. And then I'm going to take this positive 8y and put it right after the negative x. And then I'm going to copy down my equals. Then you told me earlier that that negative 30 has to move to the other side. I think you said add it to the other side. I like that. So it's going to become a positive 30. Does that make sense? So if you can do that, then today's lesson ends right there. Yet now we're back to yesterday. So look at what we have. We have perfect alignment. We have X's lined up, Y's lined up, equal signs lined up, constant terms lined up. We are good to go. So now let's talk about yesterday. Is this a level one, a level two, or a level three? If it were a level one, then my X's or my Y's would be ready to cancel each other. It's clearly not a level one. Because if I add these equations together right now, nothing good is going to happen. So it might be a level two. So I ask you this, is there any one location? So your locations are here, 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 and here. Of those four locations, is there any one of the four where I could just change the number in that location to make it cancel with the number that goes with it? Let me point to a place and you tell me. Fill in this sentence. Boy, it would sure be nice if that was a... It's got to cancel with the one above it. What's the opposite of 13? So I say to myself, gosh, I sure wish you were a minus 13 instead of a minus one. 
Do I have the authority, the ability to make it into that? I sure do. If I want to turn a negative one into a negative 13, I can just multiply this entire equation by 13. The fact that I can do that makes this a level two problem. The fact that I don't have to go and fix the bottom equation and the top equation makes it a little easier. Have I lost you? Not even a little? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is what it says with the green parentheses is what I'm going to do. And I just, we can't make mistakes. I know that I made one yesterday. It's a brain fart, but we just have to try to be as perfect as we can. So if I multiply that bottom equation by 13, what will it say? Good. Plus 104y equals 390. Okay, so you'll want to use a calculator um, for stuff like that if you want to, for multiplying those bigger numbers. It is what it is. I mean, if the numbers are big, you just ride it, ride out the storm and hope that at the end, when you divide at the end, you're going to get like, you know, y equals eight, x equals negative nine, you know, these nice numbers that, we're, that we know we're supposed to be getting. And then what am I going to do with the top equation? Yeah, I'm just not going to do anything. I'm not going to change it. I like it just the way it is because the 13x is just like, hey, I'm fine. Thanks for making a mate for me down there, that negative 13x, but don't change me or you'll screw the whole thing up. So we're just going to take that top equation and just copy it over. And at this point, we have accomplished our objective. We have turned this... I'll put a box around this for you. This is now always where we want to be. I don't know if I make that clear. I never know what I make clear, but the goal is to make it look like that because now it's a level one. And the thing about a level one is if you add, somebody's going to die. It might be the X and it might be the Y. We set it up so that it would be the X. That's the goal. So when we add our equations together, straight down here, how many X's do we get? Of course, none. That's the whole point, right? They cancel. How many Y's do we get if we add down here? 95. Negative 9 plus 104. If you owe me $9 and pay me 104, I would give you back 95 if you paid me too much. And then that equals, if you owe me 10 and pay me 390, I would give you back 380. And I'm not scared of big numbers. What I'm scared of is that dreadful possibility that now when I go to type this in my calculator, I get 4.7162. Then I go, dang, dang it, I know I'm supposed to be getting good numbers. So fingers crossed. Algebra never lies. We're going to divide both sides of this equation by 95. And we're going to get y equals 4. Smack dab on the nose, 4. So when all the dust settled there and you kind of had a chance to really look around, you realize that came out okay. My final answer is something comma four. Now, if I were to go back and number all of the equations on the board, I've already numbered equation one, equation two. Uh, we can call this equation three. This one can be equation four. This could be equation five. This can be equation six. I mean, five technically I shouldn't have labeled because it's the same as three. But I mean, there's just equations all over the place. You get to pick any one of them that floats your boat. If you picked five or six, I would probably send you to the office for a breath test or some sort of drug screening because <laughs> there's no reason a sane person would say, oh, I like these equations with the really bigger numbers. Like, who would do that? So I just, for the life of me, I would say, don't pick these. I don't know why you would pick this. Likewise, I don't even know why you would pick this. I feel like if we're thinking straight here, we ought to be physically attracted to either two or four. Smaller numbers are where we should probably go. 
Are you with me? If you want to pick the big ones, go ahead. But I'm not going to. I don't want to. Which one? Two or four? They're the same equation. They just look a little different. Four it is. So equation four in its raw form, let me copy it because I've got a lot of chaos going up here on the board. Equation four in its raw form says negative x plus 8y equals 30. That's it. And how are we going to find our x? Yeah. Y is no longer what we call a variable. It's not what we call an unknown. Y no longer can hide behind this little cute mask of being a letter. We're like, we know who you are. You're four. And so if I take the number Y and I swap it out for a four, this equation now says negative X plus 32 equals 30. Eight times four is 32. I just, it's not a mystery. What would you do from here? Mm -hmm. Which is going to give you negative X equals negative two. So what does X equal? Positive two. So you stick that right into your answer. Pat yourself on the back. On to number four. It's a process. And you will notice I did ask the computer today to make bigger numbers. So if you're feeling that burn, like in problem three, uh, Kyla and I just got up to 380. It'll happen, okay? It's just kind of ride it out. Ride the storm. It's okay. What else would we like to go over? <clears throat> Number three, okay. And do you need help with today's? Okay. Let me get Levi first since he was... So I'm going to hit his question, and then I'll get back to you. Where are you at, bud? So let me pause this real quick because I have to ask you some questions that don't belong on the recording. So, as well. So this is from assignment number ten. And which problem? You you had a specific question, I think. Is that right? Yeah. Number three on yesterday's assignment. Okay. So that says that we have negative 4x minus 5y equals 21. And then we have positive 7x minus 7y equals negative 21. So the rule is in room 135, you never, ever, ever nod politely to give Mr. Ahern the impression that like either A, I don't want my teacher to get mad because he thinks I'm dumb, or B, I don't want my classmates to make fun of me because they think I'm dumb. The rule is if I say anything that you even close to don't understand, you cut me off, right? The moment it happens. Promise? Okay. So yesterday we learned that what we want to make happen is when we add straight down. Notice how I've already... This is why assignment 10 is easier than 11 because I've already lined up all the stuff for you. So do you see, this is important, how the X's are in a perfect alignment with each other and the Y's are and the equal signs are and the numbers are, right? That's a big deal. So we don't have to worry about the stuff from today. It's all ready to go. So the goal is this, here it goes. If you were to add the top equation stuff straight down with the bottom equation stuff, would anything with an X or a Y cancel out? Of course not. X would not because negative four X right here plus seven X makes three X. So those would not cancel. You see, if you added these two terms together, they're not gonna make zero, are they? So that's not okay. So let's try again. How about the Y's? Would the Y's cancel out if I were just to add straight down top to bottom? Of course not. Negative 5y and negative 7y add to make negative 12y. So this is not a level one problem. This is not going to be one of those that we just walk through and it makes us go to sleep. So we have to now think about what could I turn a couple of numbers into that would make them disappear. So I ask you, like, let's say we wanted to get rid of the x's. 
And again, I'm going to throw you out of here if you just nod politely at me. Be a part of this conversation. What is something that four and seven can both turn into that would make them cancel? Say it. Nope. No. You were about to say it. You made the tw sound. 28 is called the least common multiple. It is perfect. So our goal now, and this goes all the way back to fourth grade when you had a teacher. <clears throat> I don't know who your fourth grade teacher was, but I guarantee you at some point, fourth grade, fifth grade, whatever, that someone taught you like, okay, here's how we do three fourths minus two sevenths. I don't know what your teacher's name was and I don't care, but I guarantee you they taught you to find something called a common denominator. Guaranteed. And that's all we're doing here. It's called a common multiple is what it's actually called. And so if I say four and seven can both turn into 28, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn them both into 28s. So having said that, I have to now parenthesize each equation and do to each equation individually whatever I need to do to make it happen. So what would you multiply the top equation by to make that negative four, say negative 28? seven don't even worry about the bottom equation i'm just saying to you right now we are going to right now multiply everything in the top equation by seven am i making sense pearson which part are you not 100 percent on that's that's what i need to know do you understand that I'm just trying to make numbers be opposites of each other? Mm -hmm. I could have done the whys, by the way. If you if you had said, Mr. Ahern, I really like killing whys. Could we do the whys? I would have said, sure. What could you turn a five and a seven both into? Uh, three. Yes. So I could. we could be doing the whys right now. But I'm not. And I'll tell you, I picked the X's because, do you see? I know you see. I don't mean to ask rhetorical questions, but do you see that this one is already a negative and this one is already a positive? Mm -hmm. That is huge because then when I turn them both into 28s, they'll be negative 28 and positive 28, and I don't have to worry about signs. I want opposites. Yeah. So now I need your help. If I multiply everything in the top equation by 7, Again, please just ignore the bottom. We're not worried about the bottom right now. Just the top equation, everything times seven, what do we get? Good. Now let's do the bottom equation. What are we going to have to multiply the bottom one by? Four. I don't give a hoot about what happens with the X's and what happens with the number on the other. I just literally could not care less. I am on a mission to turn that circled red seven into a 28. That's all I care about. Everything else is collateral damage. So multiply the bottom equation by four. What do you get? X yep. And I'll just help you with those bigger numbers. I don't want us to get hung up on, you know, just garbage arithmetic stuff. What, as a teacher, like this is so clear to me, but I never know if this makes sense. My question is, is there anything I've done so far that you wouldn't be able to do by yourself? Calculator. Just not your cell phone, right? Just get a calculator that doesn't have a cell phone capability with Spotify and all that garbage and just use it. Use it for your big numbers. Like you shouldn't use it for seven times four, seven times seven. I mean, you should know that. But like, yeah, seven times 21, just use it. I don't care. Go ahead. Anything else other than just the arithmetic that would get you? What are we like? What are we trying to do? Right. And it's not X and Y. You just got to pick one. Whichever one of them is looking at you sideways, whichever one is giving you a dirty look, you can say, fine, I'll get rid of you. You know, make it make it personal. I don't care. I Again, I chose the X's because it was convenient because they were already negative and positive. 
But the if the Y was looking at you sideways and you're like, oh, I'll show you, then we could have gotten rid of the Ys. I do not care. But you get rid of one or the other in the first step. And that is exactly what we are at right now. Right? Mm -hmm. We got this now. So we set this up so that Follow this red arrow. If you add straight down where that vertical red arrow is pointing, how many X's will you get? You will get exactly none. So you cross those out. That is called elimination. You just eliminated the X's. Done. Now, follow this blue arrow. Add straight down where the blue arrow is. And I can help you with this if you want. If you're down 35 and go down 28 more, you are down 63. So that makes negative 63. That's all I did was add. And if you want to use a calculator for that garbage, go ahead. And then I'm going to, I already copied the equals and now follow this yellow arrow and add downwards. If you have $147 in your bank account and you spend 84, how many do you have left in your bank account? Sixty-three. You have exactly sixty-three dollars left if you have one hundred and forty-seven and spend eighty-four. And now you have an equation that you were probably solving in sixth grade. Just a little number times y equals a number. Are you kidding me? So we just divide both sides by negative sixty-three. You cross out your negative sixty-threes, and after all of that, you get this precious, precious thing: negative one. So that means that our final answer will look like this, something comma negative one. That is my final answer. And I always say final, and I probably should stop saying that, but my point is like, there it is. It exists structurally. It's just waiting for one more little decoration. And that one more little decoration is the X. And how are we going to find the X? One of the equations. Mm -hmm. And you get to pick. Which one do you like the best? Do you like equation one, equation two, equation three, or equation four? I Yeah. And again, I'll say I'll send you to the office for drug testing if you pick three or four. Those big equations we needed to get the system cancelable but we certainly don't want to go back and use them. Why would we do that? So Levi likes equation two. So let's use equation two. So where are we going to put this precious negative one? In place of, yes. And I'll point to it with an arrow. Just follow this yellow arrow. You can't miss. Right smack there. It'll say 7x plus seven equals negative 21. So let me highlight something for you here with a big red box. Look at my red box, please. Just the red box. Doesn't that say negative seven times y? And isn't y negative one? And isn't negative seven times negative one positive seven? Right? Yeah. Good? And at this point now, we just have to hope that the work you've been doing all year, you're going to subtract 7 from both sides, giving you 7x equals negative 28. So you're going to divide by 7, and x equals negative 4. And then you're going to take that, and you're going to go, boop, pop it right in there, say, I am awesome, I am done, I'm on to the next problem. That's it, done. Are you with me? If you got 3x equals 16, you did something wrong. Oh, 60 is good. Sorry, I should stop eavesdropping. This is a law beyond Canvas, by the way, too, for the record, because I'm recording right now. You can literally sit at home in the comfort of your couch and rewatch all of this as you work while you're at home working hard on this worksheet. Right. Where? So let me pause the recording again. So again, assignment number 10, problem number four. The original problem I shall copy onto the board.
And I say, I am going to way less steer the ship this time. And Kyle, you're welcome to come sit over here. You're also welcome to stay right where you are. But you guys are going to work as a team, and I'm just going to be the monkey with the fake pet. So what do we do first? Sure, just add them together. So, so you have decided that you want to kill the exes. That's great. And um, are you okay with this, Levi? Mm -hmm. All right. So, how are we going to make this happen? Yes. The fact that you said all that tells me you're stronger than a 5.5. You just don't believe that yet, but you are better than a 5.5 at this point. The fact that you identified, okay, I'm going after the X's and I want to turn them both into 12s tells me you're in great shape. So let's make it happen. What do we multiply the top by? All right. So what are we going to get? Minus th mm -hmm, 36y equals. Good. What are we going to multiply the bottom equation by? So again, please help me out. What do we get? That was great. I feel like I honestly was just along for the ride there. I say that's exactly what I wanted, just to be the monkey with the pen. Now what do we do? Mm -hmm. Mash them up. Take that top equation and add it, mash it down with the bottom one. What do we get? For the for the wise, you should be thinking you owe me thirty six dollars, but you pay me back twelve, negative twenty four. Mm -hmm. Good try. Remember, if you owe me thirty six and pay me twelve, you still owe me twenty four. Unfortunately, not fourteen, right? And then if you have twelve and add sixty, what do you get? Yep. And then we're going to do a little bit of basic algebra. We're going to divide both sides. So follow the red arrow. Of course I did. The red arrow look up there, please, is adding, the blue arrow is adding, the yellow arrow is adding. Every portion of each equation, red arrow, add all the way down, blue, add all the way down, yellow, add all the way down. So yeah, don't put arrows. The, I just do arrows because I can use colors and I know that it's sometimes the only effective way I have to get people to see what I want them to see. You know what I mean? But yeah, I don't expect you to draw arrows. I expect you to put whatever notation helps you get it right. Pluses, arrows, I don't even give a rib. Some people don't put anything and that's fine too, right? So are we good to this point? So we agree at this point that the answer has to be something comma negative three. And yet again, I ask you, there are four equations on the board. I shall name them assignment or uh, equation one. Equation two, equation three, equation four. Which ones get you sent to the office for a drug test? Three and four. Three and four. Like Kyla seems to like two also. So that's good. You guys both agree two is our man. So we're going to take the number negative three and we're going to put it in place of right there. So if I copy equation two down 
but I change the y into negative three, what will it say? So here's what I've learned about Levi today, and I don't know where Kyla's at with this, but this is the step that you need to figure out because you missed it last time. And I thought maybe that you saw the light, but I think when you were like, oh, I think that might've been a fake thing. You need to understand that inside this red square right here, that is a multiplication problem, my friend. That is four times Y. The Y goes away. Imagine reaching in there with your pair of fingers, your thumb and your pointer finger and grabbing the letter. You want me to put parentheses for you? Yeah, take the Y literally goes away. This is what it would look like if I was gonna show more work. It would say four X plus four y equals 20. Do you see that? Again, please don't just say you do if you don't. That's that's so counterproductive to education. Let me pause this recording real quick so I can say something. But you got a step ahead of me. So this is good. So now what we have is 4x, and I'm just going to put minus 12, because to me, that's what plus negative 12 means. Are you with me? Light bulb on? Mm -hmm. Okay. And all you got to do now is solve. Add 12 to the other side and you get 4x equals 32. And then you got to know your times tables. What's 32 divided by 4? And guess what? Problem number four is in the books. Now, you don't have a lot of time. So all I can say is this. You have a choice to make. I'm not going to probably see, unless you guys come in for Friday school, I'm probably not going to see you Friday, Saturday, Sunday, until Monday. That's four times 24 is 96 hours. And if you go back and slide it a little bit for class, I'm probably not going to see you for 95 hours and 10 minutes. You have a choice to make in those 95 hours. Are you going to work on assignments 10 and 11 when I'm not with you? Or are you going to be in the same position Monday? And I won't be with you, so I can't make that choice. I know, of course, what I should tell you to do. You know what I will tell you. I'm not even going to say it. Nice. Where are you at? Still 5.5? Heck yeah. Keep going. Finish assignment 10 before you do assignment 11. Got it? Okay. Of course you can. Yeah, I'm going to pause this real quick. So I'll just actually.